Welcome to Sal's Classic Bodybuilding Archives. In today's episode, we go back to January 1980, Muscle Builder Power Magazine, and take a look at Steve Davis, the incredible shrinking man. Enjoy. It's difficult for many people who see my present physique to believe, but I once bulked up to an overweight 285 pounds. I was playing college football and didn't feel that my 210 to 220 pound weight was sufficient for my position, which was defensive end. So I began to train. I worked hard with the weights and increased my caloric intake. At the end of a year, I had gained 60 to 70 pounds. Obviously, not all of it was muscle. Being that big soon got to be a drag, as you can imagine. For one thing, I found it impossible to buy the kinds of clothes that I liked. Nobody had anything to fit me, and I felt self-conscious about being that big. I didn't feel I looked attractive. So, I decided to take off the extra weight. I modified my training and I went on a strict diet, which consisted of a diet drink and a one and a half pound T-bone steak per day. I kept this diet up for nine months and lost so much weight that I entered and won several bodybuilding competitions. Total muscularity rather than size and bulk is the goal I decided to pursue, and that has been my aim ever since. I could have never accomplished this now legendary before and after transformation without an all-important personality attribute, patience. It's a must quality for any bodybuilder. I can still remember how incredibly difficult it was to stick to my diet for such a long time as the fat slowly melted from my body. I am a self-motivated person, as I think any bodybuilder ought to be, and I was able to remain patient and stay disciplined. It is true today that the more progress I make, the more ambitious I become. As I prepare for one professional contest after another, when I can see my cut starting to come out, my training enthusiasm becomes virtually unstoppable in spite of the energy drain of a pre-contest diet. It seems that once a certain threshold is crossed for me, my physical improvement gets noticeably better each day. I believe that my methods for achieving extreme muscularity will work for you too. Of course, you need to follow a program of scientific nutrition and training. But beyond that, the key to a more muscular physique lies with adapting an absolutely successful plan of self-motivation. Training for muscularity is different than training for maximum muscle mass. The main difference is the rest interval between sets. In both cases, The need to overload the muscles requires that you use the maximum possible poundages with as strict a form as possible. But for the bodybuilder trying to develop as much muscularity as possible, the rest interval between sets should be no more than 15 seconds. Training this way incorporates more aerobic heart and lung stress which acts to accelerate the metabolism of fat. But you will find you need to reduce your training poundages because your body simply cannot recuperate sufficiently in only 15 seconds, especially when you go on using this method set after set. Do not mistake this training philosophy for a mere pumping routine. The idea behind the short rest period is not to allow you to dog it with lighter poundages, but to create the maximum amount of training intensity. That is, the total amount of work done divided by the time it took you to do it. Even though you will be training with lower poundages, 
than you would be using if you took more time to rest, you still must do your sets with the maximum amount of weight you can handle. Here is the tremendously effective muscle definition routine I used. All the training in the world will not make you muscularly defined unless you also pay strict attention to good nutrition and diet. My recommendation is a high protein diet which is low in carbohydrates, fat and calories. Fish and fowl, which are both low in fat, should be your primary protein sources. Figure that you need about 0.6 grams of protein for every pound of body weight. Your daily total of fat, unsaturated, and carbohydrate from green vegetables and citrus fruits should be between 40 to 60 grams per day. Remember, there is no harm in eating less than we're recommending here, but you will not get the results you are seeking if you eat more. Calories present quite a different consideration. The proper amount of calories each individual needs for this kind of program will vary. First, it is necessary to determine the minimum number of calories your body requires each day for basic survival. To find this magic total, try starting with a given number, say 10 times your body weight, and then add to or subtract from this number depending on how you feel physically the next day. To achieve maximum muscularity, you need to strive for a caloric intake that allows you to train and carry on a day's normal activities, but still creates a negative caloric balance so that your body will be forced to burn its fat reserves. But don't be surprised if the search for this caloric quantity takes up to a couple of weeks to complete. To give yourself some nutritional insurance on this kind of restricted diet, I recommend that you use a mega potency type vitamin and mineral supplement. This usually involves taking four to six large pills that, in combination, easily exceed the FDA's recommended daily allowance. Getting all your supplements in one packet or only having to take a few pills is a lot simpler than juggling a dozen individual jars and bottles. I also suggest you take an additional 5 to 10 grams of vitamin C and 30 7.5 grain desiccated liver tablets. The extra vitamin C will help keep your physical resistance high and the liver tablets will add to your overall energy and strength levels. I also believe in using choline and nositol, which are two B-complex factors, as a means of emulsifying subcutaneous body fat. Typically, body fat is a very difficult substance to break down. By including up to 3 to 5 grams of choline and nositol in your diet, the body will more readily be able to emulsify or break down these globules of fat for use as a source of energy when you're on a restricted carbohydrate diet. Once you have mastered the training and dietary aspects of the program I have outlined, all that remains is for you to activate your own personal self-motivation in order to make maximum progress. The first six weeks are the hardest, requiring the kind of patience I talked about earlier. Afterwards, you get a kind of feedback which makes the task easier. Your body begins to manifest noticeable changes. These changes will be your cues, a catalyst to develop a more intense attitude toward your training and to maintain an even stricter diet. Every time you notice a new cut or muscular separation, you will be inspired to work for even greater levels of muscularity. The mind has a powerful influence on the body, as all bodybuilders come to learn. Techniques like visual stimulation influence your mind to push your body to the ultimate it can achieve. Patience and discipline are absolutely necessary, but they will only carry you so far. 
You have to learn to feed off your successes. Let the development of your body turn you on and build enthusiasm for even greater efforts. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please leave a like, a comment, subscribe and share. I would appreciate it. And until next time, keep training and chasing the dream.